Hey everybody, this is D Hunter for another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at the McFarlane DC Multiverse DC Direct Page Puncher Deathstroke. This is Deathstroke from the Rebirth comics, and he comes with both a masked and unmasked head. I pre this guy from the McFarlane Toy Store, took advantage of the coupon code, the bundle discount, and my platinum membership discount, and after shipping taxes, cost just about retail to get these figures shipped to me. I think it was $53.00. And they're $25 each, so if I went to Target and bought these guys, I'd probably pay about $53 after taxes. So let's take a look at the packaging. They're in the clear clamshell package from the Page Puncher line, DC, McFarlane, ages 12 plus, includes a comic book in the English language. DC Direct, Deathstroke. Here he is in the package. We have his staff. A couple different bladed weapons, two different heads, collector's card, display stand, and a comic book. Both sides of the front are blank. Back side, here's a reprint of Deathstroke number one from the Rebirth comics. So with no further ado, let's open them up. And like I said, I did get both these figures from the bundle through the McFarland Toy Store. The Rebirth Deathstroke and the Batman Reborn Damian Wayne Robin. Both excellent releases. There are plenty of chase variants of both these figures and the Mahunt for two of each of those guys. If anybody has a lead on where I'm able to get one for a reasonable price, or can possibly help me out, please drop me a line in the comments below. It is much appreciated. Alright, now that this figure out of the package, here he is with all his accessories laid out. He comes with quite a bit of cool stuff. We have a display stand, a collector's card, a reprint of Deathstroke Rebirth number 1, a large staff, and then two bladed weapons. He also has two different heads. Before we take a look at all that, let's talk about and check out the figure. So this is Deathstroke from the DC Rebirth comics. It's sort of his traditional look, but a little bit altered, mainly because of that white sleeve that he has on his left arm. This is not the first time McFarlane has made this guy. They made one in a more or less black and orange suit, and this one is a blue and orange suit, so it's a paint variant, but does come with some cool stuff. Mainly, the unmasked head is the big draw for this figure set, but you do have the comic book, which is pretty cool as well. There is also a platinum chase variant of this guy, he looks really cool as well. The unmasked head is a little bit different. It looks like he has a lighter blue with some orange lines through it. And the unmasked head has a black eye patch instead of the white one, this one. So, they're both some really cool releases and it's nice to add a bunch of different death strokes to the shelf. So let's take a look. Starting with his face here. It looks pretty good. You can see the signature eye patch. Gray hair, he's an older guy. A little bit of sort of a goatee. As we go further down, there is considerably different texturing. He has a sort of scaly type texturing on the orange part. This part, pretty blank. Looks like he has the start of sort of a symbol there. That white sleeve is always kind of weird, but it is signature to the rebirth. Double jointed elbows, double jointed knees. There is different texturing on different parts of the pants, and I bet if we compare it to the original one, you'll see why. A little bit here as well. One annoying thing about this guy, the other versions came with a knife that fit into a sheath. This guy does not have that, and my best guess is that's not even a cost-saving thing by McFarlane. It's just a dumb oversight. They make mistakes like that all the time. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt, which I do think looks really good. We have Slade Wilson here, the real identity of the mercenary Deathstroke. Like I said, I personally think the unmasked head looks pretty nice. And then here's the figure, broken down as far as it can go, with all of his removable parts detached. Now check out his accessories, starting off with the boring stuff. Here's his display stand, typical McFarland stand we've seen a bunch of times before. Here's his collector's card. As you can see, it's an image of a Deathstroke. Combat, blood everywhere. Deathstroke. On the back side there is a description. If you want to read that, pause now. Here's the previous version of the Rebirth Deathstroke's Clutter's card on the left, next to the Page Puncher version in the middle, and the Frostbite edition on the right. Now let's look at this comic. This is a reprint of Deathstroke Rebirth number one. Not to be confused with Deathstroke number one from the Rebirth comics. I know that's weird, but when the Rebirth hit, they started a series called Deathstroke and started with number one. They also made a one-shot called Deathstroke Rebirth number one, and that is what this is a reprint of. You can see at the top, it has the new DC logo, Deathstroke, Rebirth, number one. We have Deathstroke in this exact same costume on the front, wielding a sword. On the back, 
it says DC. In the middle, it's a straight reprint from that comic. You see Deathstroke. So I have the original version of the Deathstroke Rebirth number one. That is this. You can see the DC logo is the same because that's the modern DC logo. Rebirth wasn't that long ago. This is the McFarlane reprint. The difference is this one has a barcode, this one does not, and the orange is a little bit different at the top. This is the variant cover of Deathstroke Rebirth number one. I notice the orange matches this one. Just mildly interesting. There's also no price below the number one, whereas these guys have that. And just to make things clearer or possibly more complicated, here is the version of Deathstroke number one from the Rebirth comics, the main cover and the cover variant. Like I said, this reprint is not based off Deathstroke number one, but Deathstroke Rebirth number one, which is a one shot. Now let's look at his heads. He has two of them, one unmasked Slade Wilson and one with the mask on as Deathstroke. Here he is with his first head. This is the unmasked head. His real name is Slade Wilson. This is the one it came with in the package. And here he is with his masked head. Deathstroke. On his right side, the blue side, his eyes completely covered because he's missing that eye. On his other side, has a white lens, black around the eye, looks good. You can see a lot of sculpting on the mask, a lot of personality. So a lot of time when McFarlane or a different company makes a figure with an alternate unmasked head, a lot of time I'll try to make a civilian version of that character. I've already done that with Deathstroke. This is my civilian version of Slade Wilson and it uses the Mezco unmasked head which I think is a little bit better than the McFarland version. But let's see if it fits onto this guy. So the body I used, and I use this for a lot of different custom guys and suits, is the Mattel WWE Elite Triple H. I think he was from a two-pack. It's a big bulky body, which is very appropriate for Slade Wilson. Pop that Mezco head right off, no problem. And let's see if the McFarland one fits. Here's this body with the McFarland Slade Wilson head on it. Actually looks really good, better than I expected. The head is just sitting on top of the peg. If I were to heat it up and shove the peg all the way into the head, then the head would be far too low. I'll probably get some sticky tack, put it on top of the peg, keep it like this, if this is the head I'm going to go with. Here's a look at this Deathstroke next to the custom Slade Wilson. Deathstroke's a little bit thinner and leaner than Slade Wilson, and that works for me. His combat suit would sort of compress his body versus a three-piece suit that the civilian Slade Wilson has on. I always preferred Slade Wilson being a bulky, tough, bruiser type character. Which head do you guys think looks better? The Mezco head on the left, or the McFarland head on the right? They both look very nice, but the Mezco one is a little more traditional Slade Wilson look, and that's the one I prefer. Now let's look at the staff. This is one of Deathstroke's signature weapons. It's a long silver staff, it has nice texturing where he's supposed to grip it. Here's Deathstroke holding that staff. He can hold it with either one hand or with two. And now for his blade weapons. The first one here is a regular sword. It looks familiar. I'm pretty sure they've released this sword before. Nice sculpt and detail on the handle. And this one here is called a Shangao. It has a little hook on the end, a little hook on the handle. Here's Deathstroke holding that sword. And even though this is not the same sword that came with the original Rebirth Deathstroke, you can holster it onto his back as well. And then here, holding that Shangao weapon. And I continue to look at this empty sheath around his ankle, wishing it wasn't empty and could have a knife to plug in that hole. And like I said before, I don't believe it's a cost saving matter. I think it's just an incompetence matter with McFarlane. Sigh. Now to look at the two versions of the Rebirth Deathstroke. We have this new page printer version and the original version. The new one is in dark blue. The original one is in sort of a really dark gray or black color scheme. Which one is more accurate to the Rebirth comics? Well, I would say the original one that's in the darker, really dark gray or black color scheme. But it's cool to have both versions. So let's take a look. Sorry with the heads. I mean, everything is exactly the same in these two figures, except for the blue versus the black. Which one do you guys like better? This one has a sort of traditional Destro color scheme to it and makes sense as a variant, but this is the more accurate, at least to the beginning of the Rebirth comics. Uh, look at that. That one came with a knife. So 
So this is the fourth Deathstroke figure to utilize his base body. The white one there has a different torso, but still uses most of the same base parts. Want to find the Platinum Page Puncher, there will be five Deathstrokes sharing this body. Now they've obtained a pretty good look at the figure and its accessories, let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, standing about 7.2 inches tall, which can translate to just over 18 centimeters. And for his articulation, starting with his head, of course, you can rotate side to side. He can look up and down a very good amount. Can't tilt his head from one side to the other. Shoulders on a ball joint goes out a little bit more than 90 degrees. Up, down, around. He does have this butterfly ring between his shoulder and chest. Increases the range of motion, although mine seems to be pretty stuck in place. It also covers up the large gap that would be there. Bicep cut. Double jointed elbow. His wrist can rotate, and it's hinged at least a little bit. Ball joint the torso, rotate around, forward and back. Another one in his waist, rotate around, forward and back. Between the two, pretty good range of motion. I think you get a little bit more out of the torso than the waist on this guy. Legs complete as splits, McFarland style hip joints. Rotation is decent on him. Legs go forward about that far, back not much double jointed knees, and then his ankle. Forward and back, rotate, tilt, rock, and of course, tour articulation. Here's Deathstroke on a Gotham City roof. He's sniping his target. Say what you want about Deathstroke. He's just a mercenary. It'll kill for the highest bidder. Meanwhile, out of Gotham City, back at his dojo, Deathstroke continues to train perfect his body for the next kill. You can see the duffel bag full of money next to him. That was his reward for his Gotham City kill. Batman drops in, tells Slade, you shouldn't have come to my city. I told you last time, never again. Deathstroke pulls out his sword and gun. Batman and Deathstroke get ready for the fight of their lives. Batman has Damian Wayne Robin take the duffel bag full of money. No matter who wins the fight between Batman and Deathstroke, Deathstroke is going to lose. Here's a look at both versions of the Rebirth Deathstroke. The original version, this new page printer version, and my Slade Wilson in their dojo training. Now let's check them out. Next is some other action figures, starting off with some other Deathstroke figures. Here's this new page puncher Deathstroke, next to the original Rebirth Deathstroke. And so far, there have been four Deathstroke figures utilizing the space body. And here he is, next to the Arkham Origins version of Deathstroke, which is still my favorite version McFarlane has made. Here are all the different McFarlane DC Multiverse Deathstroke figures they've done so far. There are currently six of them. Whenever I find the Platinum Chase of this page printer version, there will be seven. McFarlane also released these two versions of the Deathstroke. On the left, the DC Direct, DC Essentials, Deceased Deathstroke, and on the right, the Superpowers version. Then, next to the DC Direct, DC Essentials, Rebirth Deathstroke, these guys are both representing the same costume from the Rebirth comics. And here he is, next to all my DC Direct, and DC Collectibles Deathstroke figures. And here he is, next to the Mix Max third party Deathstroke. Then, with a couple of Mezco 112 Collective Deathstrokes. And now, with the amazing Yamaguchi Deathstroke. Next, with my Mattel Deathstroke figures. Here he is, next to my custom Slade Wilson in civilian attire. Then, next to a DC Direct Ravager, this is Deathstroke's daughter. Here's a look at all of the Deathstroke figures in my collection. I believe I have all of them in the 6 and 7 inch scale. Now let's check them out. Next is some other recently released McFarland DC Multiverse figures. Here's this Page Puncher Deathstroke. Next to the Page Puncher Damian Wayne. These are the two newest Page Puncher figures. And like I said earlier, they both have Platinum Chase variants. If anyone would help me out, please let me know. Here's Deathstroke. Next to McFarland Toy Store exclusive Jonah Hex. And here he is. Next to the Michael Go Alfred that came with the Batman Forever Batmobile. And the GameStop exclusive Frostbite Deathstroke. Then... Next to the 7th wave of McFarlane Collector's Edition figures, Battle Damage, Dark Knight Returns, Batman, New 52 Huntress, and a couple of Green Lantern Corps members, Abin Sewer and Tomar Ray. Now each of these figures has a Platinum Chase variant, and I'm on the hunt for two of each of them. Anyone can help me out? Let me know. And now, with the Batman Forever wave, collect a build Nightmare Bat. Here's Deathstroke, next to the most recent Platinum wave. Bullseye Batman, Hugo Strange's Batman, Batman Begins Lucius Fox, and the Flash movie Batfleck. And here he is, next to most recent Batman wave. Both the regular and Platinum Chase variants of the Batman Reborn, Dick Grayson Batman, the Adam West Batman, and the world's finest Fusion Batman Superman. Then, with the sixth wave of Collector's Edition figures, Red Hood, 
Claw King, Ragman, and Agent Liberty. Each of these four figures has a Platinum Chase variant. I'm still looking for one Red Hood, two Clock Kings, and one Ragman. And now, with the Walmart exclusive Gold Label Vampire Shazam and Max Mercury. And finally, with the DC Classics Dark Side Mega Figure. Now let's check them out. Next is some action figures from different various companies, so we can see how he fits in, both scale and style-wise. In case you know which lines you can mix him with, since he's a McFarland toy, they're typically the 7-inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines I collect, and work my smaller. But first, let's check him out with some of his McFarland toys brothers. In front of you are five different action figure lines, all from McFarland toys, all 7-inch scale. And now, with some Jack-specific wrestling figures, and some dumb and select toys. Here's Deathstroke, next to a roll of paper towels. And here he is, with some DC Direct and NECA figures. Then, with both some Mattel and Jazzwares wrestling figures. And now, with some Mezco and Mattel DC figures. Next, with some Mafex and Hasbro Marvel Legends. And finally, with some SH figure arts and Jazzwares Fortnite figures. So overall, this is a pretty nice Deathstroke figure. It's sort of a combination of the Rebirth Deathstroke and the Classic Deathstroke. It's the Rebirth Deathstroke repainted in classic colors. His accessories are fantastic. The unmasked head is great. He has three different weapons, a comic book. He is missing his knife, and that does hurt the figure at least a little bit. Sculpt and paint job are excellent. Articulation is everything you'd expect from a modern McFarlane DC Multiverse figure. If I were to rate this guy, first thoughts, 7 out of 10. But I do prefer the original version in the darker, almost black color. And the fact that he's missing a knife... It's going to put him down to a 6.5. Still, it's a very nice Deathstroke figure, and I'm looking forward to comparing with the Platinum one whenever I get one. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.